Hello to my fellow archers. Thanks for checking out my video. Today I'd like to talk to you about a scope I designed for myself and I'm going to start making these available on my eBay store. This is the 3D printed ghost scope. It's designed to hold a 1.355 lens and I'll be talking about some of its features and configurations. Now I designed this scope for someone who maybe doesn't have the best eyes. So when I did design it, I made sure I had a large aiming face with multiple rings for alignment inside. And it also has a large 40 millimeter level bubble. It is compatible with sights that will receive a 10 30 second rod. It has a stainless steel rod that is two and three eighths inches long. And it is held in place with a heat insert that's made of brass. In the rear of the scope, you have two different rings that are removable. You have a sunshade and you have a retainer ring. Each one of these is capable of retaining a lens or a pin. The scope does come with two separate TPU 3D printed O-rings and they're two different sizes. The reason that I'm including two different sizes is simply because different lenses are different thicknesses and with the different size thicknesses of the O-rings, hopefully one of these will be a little more compatible with whichever lens that you decide to use. The pin that comes with your scope is also 3D printed from the same type of PETG plastic. It does have a piece of fiber in it that is easily changeable. You can clip this, melt your mushroom on the end, pull it through, clip it here and remelt it and use whatever color you'd like. It is designed to hold a 0 0.019 fiber and you can put it at any angle that you like inside of your scope. Now, I do recommend using the thinner of the rings, of the TPU O-rings here to hold in your side pin. And the way that I found that works really well is say I wanted a bottom vertical pin, I would hold it a little to the left here as I tighten it down. Once it starts to get snug, simply snug it over into place into that final vertical position and you can place it anywhere you'd like. Now if you don't want to run the lens retainer, the lens retainer and the sunshade both have the same size and length of threads as you can see here. So you can use the sunshade in place of the lens retainer if you like a shorter scope. Again, hold your pin in place where you'd like it, just to the left, and tighten it into place. So you can see you get a shorter, more compact scope that way. This scope does feature what I call true center technology. So what that means is when I designed this scope, I designed it so that the face of the lens or the pin exactly lines up with the center of your 10 32nd rod here. So let me mount this scope up and show you how that helps. So I've loosely mounted this scope in my Surelock, and we have a reference point behind it. And if your zero is perfect in the center of the gold and you bump your scope, you can see I can move the scope up and down without affecting my elevation. Let me show you what that looks like with the lens in place. With our lens installed, you can see that even though we rotate our scope, our dot stays in the gold. You don't have to worry about bumping your scope housing and losing your elevation. Now you can see the difference if I mount the lens in the rear position that is not in the true center of the scope. Any rotation is going to throw you off zero. So let's talk about exactly what you will receive with your scope kit. You're going to receive the scope housing and rod. You will receive your pin. You're going to receive both O-rings, a lens retainer, and a sunshade. So when we break it all down, these are all the parts of the standard scope. Now we'll go, we'll go over some uh, optional parts here that I would highly recommend. Now the scope housing itself 
is tapped up top for a 1 quarter 28 uh, thread, which will accept a light 1 quarter 28. And it is angled so that the splash or column of light is going to hit partially on your level, but most of it's going to hit on your pin. So to give you an idea of what that looks like, we'll place our pin back in. Okay, there's your standard pin with the light turned on. This is an adjustable rheostat light, so it has a very wide range, and I love using this light at dusk. It works excellent, but you can see you get just a bit of glow on your level. You can see that from the side here. With the majority of your light going into your pin, and with this translucent PETG, you also get a nice glow around the entire body of the scope. Another accessory that is not included, but is highly recommended, is a scope lens. Now this is a 1.355 Optics 300 lens in 4X, and I have one of my own dot kits on it, and this is actually what I prefer to shoot with. Now you wouldn't normally put a dot kit in the rear position here, but just to show you if you wanted to shoot the fiber pin with a lens. You can do that by placing your lens in the rear position and you will have a magnified pin. Now let me show you the way that I like to shoot mine. I shoot simply a dot kit with the sunshade. just like that. Furthermore, I usually don't use a 10 32nd rod on my Sherlock. You can loosen your lock screw right there or your lock nut and remove your screw. And you can mount this in most scope mounts. Now the Sherlock mount looks like this. It comes with a 10 32 screw. You simply tighten it up just like this. and that's what your final finished product is going to look like. The light does work great with dots as well. So if I put a little darkness in here, you can turn on the light and you can adjust it from a very faint light all the way up to very bright in the evening time. Okay, I'll talk about another configuration that you can use. You may be wondering what this slot and these holes are around this retainer ring. I know a lot of people like to run a large piece of fiber optic, especially if you shoot outdoors a lot, maybe for 3D shoots. And with this, you can do that. Now, this takes a little bit more effort. Uh, what you need to do is take your, uh, your up pin here and just clip out this piece of fiber that's in it and go get whatever color fiber you'd like. That's why I don't really see a point in putting a big piece of fiber in these scopes because most people are going to choose whatever color that they see the best. Now a seven inch piece of fiber works good. Just put you a little mushroom on the end of your fiber. You can see this one right here. And after you've clipped out your short piece of fiber, you're gonna run your long piece right into the front of your uh, retainer here for your fiber. Now this goes through the front and then there's a hole right here down at the bottom. If you put the fiber in between these little wings and kind of push up on it, it takes a little bit of dexterity and some good eyesight. Just like that, you'll get your fiber coming through the bottom. Pull that all the way in. You can see how bright that fiber is already looking. Now place this in your scope housing, you'll need to put your O-ring around it. You've got to thread your fiber through there. So that's what we've got so far. Now we're going to put our retainer in. Again, we're going to put our fiber through our retainer. 
and we're going to tighten all that down. I'll go ahead and put my pin where I want it. And I'm going to do a vertical pin again. Snug that down and then I am just want to twist it right into place. Now this ramp that's built into the back of your pin back here, that sloped part, will line up with one of these holes. So if you look right down through here, you're going to see that one of these will be pretty close. And so I'm going to push my fiber back up through and pull it out the front. until we get to this point right here. And you can see that fiber is wanting to go down through one of these holes. So I'm just going to push it in from the, just pushing in this way from the front. You can see it's going to come out through the hole in the bottom. At this point, you just need to pull your fiber through and you have this set of retainers all the way around that you can thread your fiber around. So I'm just pushing the end down as I go and feeding the fiber from the bottom here. You can use a piece bigger than seven inches if you need more light gathering. Seven inches is enough to reach around the entire retainer. Again, I'm just pushing it down, feeding it through. It does take a, take a couple of minutes to do this. Again, this is 0 0.019 fiber. I tend to see oranges and pinks better. A lot of people I know like to use the um, ultraviolet type blue fibers that glow in daylight. Those work really well. And they do also work with the blue lights like the one that we uh, used earlier. Even though you have this fiber all the way around, your light will still work. Now you may end up with a little extra fiber in the front. Just push it through. Feed it down the back and keep feeding it right around the body. Tweezers are, can be helpful here if you have a pair of tweezers. You can grab and pull. Okay, so that's about how much time it takes to do that. But you do get a really nice bright dot with the natural light when you use a long piece of fiber. And again, your light still works really well. When you're ready to take out this fiber, or if you just want to change color, I'd recommend taking off your sunshade. Take out your O-ring. And when you take off this retainer, just make sure that as you turn it, the pin turns as you turn the retainer. The reason is you don't want this little area right here to get kinked in between your fiber if you want to keep that fiber and reuse it. Now you can just thread this back, uh, the reverse, the way you put it in and pull it out the front. That works as well. It's a little faster doing it this way though. So you can see as I unscrew this retainer, you can see my pin is moving with the retainer. So as long as you got that, you should be in good shape. You can unscrew it, it'll all come out in one piece. Then you can simply pull your fiber. It'll come right out of your retainer. Take off your O-ring and you can change to a new color. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching my video. I'll show you the site picture you can expect as you can see, you got that nice ring within a ring when you're using the sunshade. Now, if you don't want that secondary white ring in there, you can always 
take off your retainer and use just the sunshade. And your side picture is going to look a little different. It's going to look a little more like this. We have black, white, black, which is the way I prefer to shoot. Anyhow, I just wanted to uh, show you guys what uh, the features are of this scope. If you're interested in one, you can check them out on my eBay store. Just search for my username. It's Archer28, so Archer28. If you have any questions, feel free to message me. You can message me on eBay. You can message me here on Facebook, and I'll do my best to get your questions answered. Thanks, guys.